Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Arcanum. Uh, Mr. Drake, after escaping the clutches of the Malokian Hand Assassin, has finally arrived in the safe harbor of Blackroot. And here he has to retrieve the uh, taxes for the King of Cumbria. He has to find Arthur Tyron for Matt Desazar. And also, very early in the game, he had heard a rumor that uh, the expert trainer for melee can be found somewhere in Blackroot, so he'd also like to find out who that might be. Uh, but first, he's going to secure rooms for himself and his group uh, for their stay in Blackroot. So he'll enter the uh, Drop Your Anchor in. Good day. It's a pleasure. Uh, greetings, sir. Might I ask your position? I'm Mr. Halloway, the innkeeper of this fine establishment. Uh, pleasure, Mr. Halloway. Uh, what have you to offer a traveler? Oh, certainly, sir. We offer only the highest quality rooms with excellent amenities. Each room is decorated in the latest fashion, complete with trunks for storing your valuables. Additionally, we employ guards to ensure the safety of our guests, all for a mere 25 coins per night. Oh, um, well, that sounds very nice, but that might be a bit more than I can afford. Well, business is rather slow at the moment. Would you be interested in completing a task in exchange for a room? Uh, I suppose that would depend upon the task. A while back, I took my strongbox to the local blacksmith, Garrett, for repair. He said he would fix it for 50 coins, to which I agreed. When I returned to get it, he demanded 137 coins. I refused to pay. I won't be swindled by that mongrel. However, it's an old family heirloom and I want it back. Um, did he give you no explanation for the increase? No, he tried to tell me I had asked for additional work, which I had not, that it took much longer than he anticipated, and he lost out on some other work due to the time he spent on my project. I attempted to negotiate, but there's no reasoning with that brute. And you require my assistance with its return, I suppose. Oh yes, I'd be very grateful for your help. If you can get the strong box back for me, I would reward you by providing you a room at no charge. In fact, if you get it back for me, you can have a room for as long as you require. Well, that sounds agreeable. Uh, consider it done. An excellent agreement, sir. I await your return. I'll go now. Alright, so Mr. Drake will make his way over to the local blacksmith, whose shop is mercifully close. Alright, and uh, so let's, he'll talk to the blacksmith. It's good to meet you. Very good. Uh, greetings, sir. Are you the local, uh, blacksmith? I am. Name's Garrett Olmstead. Mm, can I ask you a question? What is it? Make it quick. I don't have all day. Um, well, how exactly did a half-orc become the town blacksmith? I get that a lot. I was abandoned as a child. I spent several years living on the streets, scavenging and stealing what I needed to survive. I never stayed in one place long. Till I came to Blackroot, that is. What was different in Blackroot? The old blacksmith, Gurney, didn't have any children, but he wanted someone to keep the shop running after he was gone, so he took pity on me and made me his apprentice. Worked me long, hard hours, yet he was a fair man. He passed on a few years back. I still miss him. Well, it sounds like you've had a very hard life, and I'm sorry for your loss as well. You know, most people don't give a damn about me, always talking about me being a half-breed bastard and such. Some even do it to my face. It's a rare few who actually care enough to say a kind word. Thank you. Here, take this. It's a little something I made. A gift for your kindness. Uh, thank you very much. Um, can I ask you something else? What else do you need? Um, I've just been over at the inn speaking to Mr. Halloway. That spendthrift. I bet he told you all about how I'm trying to overcharge him for his precious strongbox, didn't he? He's got the nicest place in town, and he wants to quibble over a few coin. Uh, yes, he did mention the incident. Can you tell me what happened? He did bring his box in for repair. Told me the latch was sticking and asked me to fix it. I gave him an estimate of 50 coin. While I had it, I noticed the hinges were bad, so I replaced them, and one of the corner pieces would chip, so I repaired it. The final price came to 137 coin. So, you did repair things that he didn't ask you to. Look, when I do something, I do it right. He knows the quality of my work. If he brought things to me when they began to show wear, it wouldn't cost so much to get them fixed up. 
Until he pays, it's staying locked up in my shop. Well, has Mr. Halloway been a good, good customer over the years? Well, yeah, he has. Brings me stuff on a regular basis, always pays quick. He's pretty well off, you know. Uh, does he ever help you out, send you other customers? Well, now that you mention it, if his guests need anything repaired, he's always quick to send his guests my way. Uh, so having him upset with you could really hurt your business. Hmm. I guess you're right. Maybe it would be good to fix things up with him. How do you suppose I can do that? Well, first off, why don't you let me take the box back to him? For free? Uh, well, it would be a show of good faith. You don't want to lose him as a customer. There's no way I'm going to let all that work go for free. I don't care if it does cost me his business. I understand. Uh, what about if you only charged him the original 50? I guess I could let it go for that much. I did lose a job finishing it up. I sure hate to lose this money, too. But I guess it would be a lot worse to lose Mr. Halloway as a customer. Yeah, all right. I'll return it to him if I get the 50 coin we first talked about. I'm sure he'll be happy. Here, I have the coin. I'll take him the box. All right, take the strong box back to Mr. Halloway. Let him know I apologize for the misunderstanding and that I hope we can do business again. It's in the trunk over near my bedroom door. Here's the key. Okay, I'll deliver it to him. Thanks very much. All right, so Mr. Drake will take the antique strong box and uh, the blacksmith also, also, because Mr. Drake was kind to him and, and sympathetic, he uh, gave him a pair of dwarven gauntlets, which uh, Mr. Drake can pass out to one of his companions later on. But let's return the box to Mr. Holloway in exchange for a free room. So, how may I be of help? Uh, gr I've obtained your strong box. Oh, well done. Here. Uh, tell me, how did you manage to retrieve it from such a barbarian? Uh, well, he was a tough one, but I think I negotiated a fair price. Very good. I'm so glad to have it returned to me. And about our agreement? As agreed, I'll give you room to use at your leisure. You'll find an excellent suite just down the hall. I do hope you enjoy your stay and thank you again. And it was a pleasure doing business with you. So now Mr. Drake has permanent access to this uh, rather luxurious suite in the back of the uh, of the inn. So uh, this is a good place. If, if you want to use this as an alternate base uh, for your character, an alternate base to the one in uh, the warehouse in Toronto, or if you just don't like those shabby surroundings, uh, this one might be a bit better suited to your taste. Oh, but you can use this one for the rest of the game. All right, so now on to speak to the mayor of Blackroot about uh, retrieving the taxes. And the mayor's house is all the way down here. It's this little estate. So, and as he's walking down, Mr. Drake sees to his side a practice field with a bunch of soldiers. And he sees this one grizzled war veteran who stands out among the rest. So knowing that the master of melee is somewhere in Blackroot, he's going to approach this uh, old fellow first and speak to him about it. All right. A fine day it is. Uh, hello, sir. May I ask your name? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Herkimer Ogdodler. Who might you be? I'm known as Robert Drake. What can I do for you, Robert Drake? Um, what exactly is it that you do? I'm a simple soldier, a veteran of the wars with Tarrant and Durnholm. I'm retired now, living here in Blackroot. I sometimes offer instruction in martial skills to those who qualify and have a genuine interest in learning. It's honest money and I enjoy the company. Um, well, if it's not an imposition, could you tell me of the war? I'm one of the last who remember the wars, though I'd prefer not to. Since the day that Cumbria went down to defeat, the policies of the Tarantian Industrial Council have bled the kingdom of Cunt Cumbria dry and reduced its capital, Durnholm, to ruins. Yes, I've witnessed its uh, downfall. Please continue. In the war, I served in the elite guard of Cumbria, the Dragon Knights. We were unmatched with sword, mace, or axe. Trained from childhood, we were. First squires, then men-at-arms, and then knights serving our king. We fought with honor and virtue. The war with Tarrant was different from all other wars. It saw the end of the Age of Chivalry. 
the noble knight was replaced by a line of green recruits with guns. At the start of the war, the rifle was only issued to the Tarantian sharpshooters, but by the end they were standard issued to every recruit in the damn army. Combined with ranked unit formations to concentrate fire, the Tarantians were able to control the battlefield, and to do it with inferior soldiers. Uh, indeed, the gun will ever be the coward's refuge. It was the end of 500 years of tradition. I witnessed knights gunned down as they offered challenges on the field of honor. The cowardice of this new kind of war is a disgrace. Yes, please continue. The only weakness of their formations was that they could not stand the shock of melee. When we could engage them in hand-to-hand, -hand, victory was ours. Our tactics became those of ambush, of fighting in the woods, hills, and mountains where the closeness of the terrain aided our style of fighting. But these are tactics used by a weaker force against a stronger force. We had many glorious victories in battle, but eventually, and at great cost, the Tarantians prevailed and we lost the war. The Cumbrian military was shattered, disarmed, and disbanded. The Kingdom of Cumbria ceased to exist as a military power in Arcanum. For two generations, Cumbria languished as an economically abused and technologically impaired backwater in the shadow of Tarant. Its once fine capital, Durnholm, has become a ruin. I moved away to find peace here in Blackroot, and I'm reconciled to it. The war was a long time ago, and we lost. Please forgive an old man his ramblings. You've been most patient. Uh, no, it, it's been my pleasure, sir. You've been very patient, the sign of a good student. If you ever have need of a trainer, I'll accept you as a pupil. That's most kind of you. Um, let's discuss training, please. And then he's going to charge Mr. Drake the standard 500 coins for expert training, so... I'd like to be trained uh, in the melee skill, please. Alright. And now, uh, who could train me to be a master of melee? Garrick Stout is the master of melee. He's proven himself the best in numerous passages of arms. His skill is legendary and respected throughout Arcanum, but his prowess has bred conceit in his character. It's regrettable that so many seek him for his wisdom. Now that's a pity. Arrogance is a fool's luxury. He's a crass man, unchivalrous and lecherous in his affairs. If abandoning all that's pure and good is the consequence of mastery, then I'll never pursue it. I could learn nothing from such a man. He still lives in Durnholm, I believe. They have made him captain of the guard, even. I can remember when that position was held by honorable men. Disgusting. Uh, well, perhaps he'll get what's coming to him. And I must depart. All right, so he knows where the Master of Melee can be found, actually back in uh, Blackroot. Uh, excuse me, back in uh, Durnholm. So, he'll head down to the Mayor's Manor and speak to him about retrieving these taxes for the King of Cumbria. And the Mayor is right back here. So, when we return, more antics in Blackroot. As always, thank you for watching and please stay tuned.